Hi, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mr. Kester Amos. We're back in Ogun State, and this time we're building some concrete pens and greenhouses. So uh, we'll just walk you through. The concrete pen session is a massive one. We have over 370 something pens and two greenhouses, as you can see. Uh, with time, we're going to multiply the greenhouses. So along that line, we'll be having several greenhouses. But for now, we're starting with two. So as things progress, we're going to increase. So we're just going to take you into the concrete pen building and show you exactly what we've been doing so far here. All right, so this is the entrance. So we have a single entrance, you can see. It makes it easy for the attendants to walk. So as soon as you come in, you can either go to your right or you go to your left. So the pens are constructed in a way that you have complete access uh, to manage the snails. So we've just started the plastering. You can see how neat the job is. This is exactly what we need. So of course, you have to plaster like this so that the snails will not destroy the walls of the um, pen. As you would see from the ones that have not been plastered, it's very easy for snails to damage the walls because there is calcium carbonate uh, inside the cement that the snails are going for. As a result of that, they keep eating into the blocks. But when you plaster it, this smooth, you discover that it becomes very difficult for the snails to have access to destroy the blocks. So that is why you must do this plastering. It's very important. So we have about 300 plus pens here. We'll just walk you through them as you can see. Uh, we've not done much as regards the plaster. So the whole of this is still there for us to plaster and uh, the whole of this part as well. On the other so all this is within the plastering process. So down to the end, that's what we have. We have pens to your right and to your left. We're going to finish the plastering. And once the plastering is done, we'll begin to do the covering with the uh, wire mesh in order to prevent predators that could fly from the top, like um, cockroaches, flies, and other flying insects. So that's the whole idea. So this is where we have our water for now, where they used to do their work. So yeah, these guys are really good at their job. You can see them, and um, this is what we do. So we just have to cover the top, and that'll be it. And the next phase will be to introduce the loamy soil, and then we'll begin to stop the pens. So we'll just take you back to the greenhouses and uh, we'll call it a day. The house structures here. Yeah? Like I said, the whole of this line, we are going to line it up with uh, greenhouses because these two will not be sufficient for what we're bringing in here. This is going to take over uh, 15,000 snows, breeding snows. So the breeders will definitely be here. This is where we'll uh, uh, sort for the eggs, incubate the eggs, hash the eggs to baby snails. And when the eggs are hashed, we we'll move them into the greenhouses. So you can see this is the greenhouse. We'll take you inside. We we'll just finished the installation. So the next thing is for the plumber to come and install the sprinklers. Once the plumber has finished installing the sprinklers, then it will be cultivated upon and allowed to grow for a period of two months. And after two months, we can now begin to transfer the baby snails into the greenhouse. Because you need to allow the vegetation to be well established before you can do that transfer. So out of the 300 plus pens we have, we're going to leave at least 80 to 100 pens in order for us to be able to accommodate the snails that will be uh, ashed before this place is fully established. So that's the reason why you must not stock all the concrete pens you have, even if you have a greenhouse system. Because the greenhouse will take at least two months to be established. So between that period of two months, your snails will lay a lot of eggs and lots of them will hatch to baby snails. And you need somewhere to keep them. So we're going to have at least 80 to 100 pens left while we hash 
with about 10 pens then the remaining pens will be using them to hold the hatchlings the baby snails for a period of two to three months waiting for the uh, greenhouse to be fully established then we can begin to transfer the young snails into the greenhouse so once we start transferring the snails into the greenhouse we can decide to add to the parent stock which is a breeding stock on the extra 100 pens that we had initially left for the uh, baby snails to stay so we can decide to stock up to 50 60 of them and just allow probably four empty pens just for emergency situations and that is very important because there are each sometimes ants to burrow out from any of the pens and you may need to move the snails somewhere temporarily to treat that pen yeah despite the german flow sometimes there are some stubborn hands that will burrow out from the concrete pen and also there are some substandard jobs so maybe the German floor is not properly done you will have issues of ants in flux on the pens so you must have some empty pens for contingency plans for emergency plans so that's the situation uh, we have here is still a farm under construction uh, we're looking at stocking in the next uh, probably the most time from now because this is a lot of work as you can see for them to finish plastering this place but the good part of it is we have done the roofing so even when it is raining it can begin to plaster so that is one of the good things so when building such type of project in a rainy season the first thing you must do is after doing your perimeter block work you must roof the structure before other block work will take place so uh, when it rains it doesn't affect or slow the work so yeah that's what we have to show you so this is the passage between the two greenhouses and of course it's uh, well spaced so one can easily have access to it and you can decide to plant some um, tree crops here to provide additional shade for the snow so uh, that's all we have to show you here today of course um, I remain my humble self, Mr. Kester Amos, if you will. If you want to follow us on YouTube, please uh, type Kester Amos on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, share the link, and the number to reach us is plus 2348-068-525032. God bless you and bye-bye.